Yeah, that's that stoicism, right? That yeah, negative a, visualization from exactly. the stoicism book. I read yeah. that too. It's like, yeah. it's interesting. There's a whole cohort, Naval, you, and other folks who are, I think when you hit it big, it it does fuck with your mind a little bit yeah. where you're like, okay, what now? Yeah. Like there's two ways to have your mind fucked with, I think. It's like tragedy yeah. and abundance. It's, yes. And I think a lot of people in this town are struggling with the abundance. Uh, yeah. And people get weird. I, I think that's that's right. People struggle with the abundance and then they don't know what to do because there's no goal. There's no more carrot, right? right? And then, or you can set a bigger one, but then you realize like, oh, I got this one and I'm not any happier. No. So what happened? Like that's the promise of America is like, oh, you do this thing, you get this big cookie or whatever and right. then boom, you're happy. And then you get it and you eat it and you're like, I'm not any happier. That what no. happened? Yeah. So you can even either like people go two ways, right? You set a bigger goal, or you realize like there's something else. I, I, there's another axis I have to optimize for. Yeah, it's really interesting when you look at like just entire nation states. In China, they're thinking just about forget about this higher order stuff like happiness or yeah. worth or contentment or gratitude. There's a there's a billion people who are like I want to have running water, a job, a car, and yeah. money. And they're just like Americans were, you know, at the turn of the century, you know, like a yeah. hundred years ago, like, I, I just want to be able to produce my family. I just want to accumulate some wealth and yeah. have a car on the driveway and own a home. Yep. And that's like, what we're up against is like a, a 996 culture that just wants to make money. And when I spend time over there, they're just like, it's just about making money. Yeah. Well, everyone, every culture goes through its phases, right? Yeah. Like eventually people care about the environment they live in. Yep. They start to care. I mean, this has happened in the United States, right? In the 70s, like before we created the APA, like the U.S. was like- Destroying not, yeah, everything. Was destroying everything. And then we were like, well, we care about the environment. Once you get, you know, it's like a next phase on Maslow's hierarchy, right? right. Once you have the basics, you're like, oh, I care about the environment I live in. I care about my yeah. mental health. And know, then in so. Europe, they care about lifestyle. So they're yeah. all just like, and then- What's very interesting is your economic growth, your GDP yeah. is negatively correlated. So like the GDP of China is yep. just whatever, triple ours. Yep. And then ours is double or triple Europe's. So it's kind of yeah. like it goes around the globe in this like, oh yeah. And then now your negative growth in Europe and they're like, yeah, but we take six weeks vacation. <laughs> I mean, that's and, the ultimate end of, uh, end of human evolution. It might be. I always get this like very interesting pitch from companies I work with, the unlimited vacation. Unlimited vacation is a fraud. As a company who where we had unlimited vacation at, at Justin TV, I think unlimited vacation is is uh, is not good. I'm no longer a proponent. I think you should, because the people who take unlimited vacation, you actually don't want to work at your company. Right. What you want is people to take a healthy amount of vacation that's a fair amount where they like disconnect and take a break so they can come back and work just you know hard. Right. And you want to just be clear about it. Like yes. I, think, I think it's unlimited vacation is like speaking for myself, you know, not for other people. It's like what ju juvenile managers don't know, like who don't know how to like tell, talk to people about what's appropriate vacation or not. Right. Take it's like this am ambiguous thing you just put out there. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a I'm not an unlimited vacation fan. I thought that was like really weird advice that people give. Like, I, it doesn't. Matter. What do you think about the anti hustle culture? As we wrap up here, like it seems like people are. Uh, there's like a formation now of like multiple camps. There's like the zebra movement. I don't know if you saw that in the What's New York Times. Um, it's startups that either can't raise venture capital or choose not to, oh, and it's they like kind of the bootstraps. The boot, yeah, bootstrapper. but it's it's like bootstrapping with a tinge of like VCs are toxic. I don't want to grow as fast as VCs want to grow. Then yeah. there's like the you know, Gary Vaynerchuk way over here, hustle till you die, yeah. like wake up at five, rise and grind. And then yeah. there's sort of people in the middle, it doesn't have to be crazy at work, maybe like the 37 signals. Where do you fall in that camp? I think- You're still that, hustling, right? I'm, I'm hustling, but I'm still living my life like in a reasonable way. I mean, at, at Atrium, I think we have a hardworking culture, but it's not insane like startup. Hmm. Um, I think that, uh, you really want to think about sustainability. Like what's a sustainable lifestyle for you? Mm. Um, because startups are marathons, they're not sprints. I think mm. that is very important. Um, that sustainability probably involves some level of vacation, some level of like seeing your family, you know? Yeah. Like I think those things are very important. Um, so yeah, this, I, I don't have like, I guess I'm not dogmatic about it though, because yeah. the way I think about it is there are many ways, what, what I learned at Y Combinator actually, 
and like in my years after Twitch was like, there are many ways to start a startup. Like I always tell, I mean, I'll always go to back to like Beats by Dre. It's like two celebrities start a company and they completely outsource the product to another company. And it's basically like a marketing company. And they, they take, you know, they raise hundreds of millions of dollars and eventually there's like $900 million that they immediately pay to themselves as a dividend. You would not think that that company would be successful. No, on paper, that sounds like a Ponzi scheme. Right. But then they- We're raising 900 and distributing it to our partners. Yeah. And so- that... Welcome to the cap table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 And, but yet it was, right? It was very successful. And so- there are many, I'm not, now I'm not saying I would want to start a company like that, but I'm right. saying there are many ways to start a company. You can bootstrap a company. There's like the, you know, Spanx, like uh, Sarah Blakely type yeah. of company. You can, you can raise a shit ton of venture capital and you can start that, start that company. There's so many different ways to do it. You know, I don't think there's a rule, right? right. Obviously different cultures, soap cultures have their own rules that Gary Vaynerchuk or Y Combinator, how you start a startup or, you know, there's different ways that people do it. But I, I think that what I have learned from meeting entrepreneurs all over the world is that there's many ways to start a company. And you should find what works for you. Yeah, it's just different playbooks. Yeah. Like you can go slow, you can grind it out. Exactly. You could raise like 75 million for Atrium and go big. Which yeah. is what you chose to do now. He's like, well, I know it's gonna work. I yeah. might as well go for it. Was that your thinking? Exactly, it's like, I know it's gonna work. My goal is to really try some, to do something, build something really fast and, and, um, and big and with high impact. And I felt like this market existed. I understood the problem, so I wasn't as worried about like finding product market fit. And so that's that's what we that's why we kind of did it the way we did it. But it's not the right way for everyone, right? Like I have a friend Peter who who uh, found this this company RX Bar, right? They, yeah, I love RX Bar. Yeah, he they, they didn't raise look a dollar. behind you on the shelf. There we go. There we go. They're a part a, a partner for this show, <laughs> exactly. Because I eat them all the time. My trainer was like, "Eat this. Yeah. It's like two egg yo it's two egg whites and like some six dates. almonds and yeah dates. you're done yeah i'm like okay I eat, I eat maybe five of those a week i love them i know and your friend started that company yeah and they, they, so they i think they only raised like a couple ten cents of thousands of dollars from family or something like that and then you know they sold for 700 million dollars they sold for years. 700 million dollars in five years Why so not? so there are lots of ways like there's i'm not the anti-vc people they're saying vc is toxic all the time well no some of the greatest companies in the world have been created with vc capital venture capital twitch could never have been created without venture capital because we didn't have 45 million dollars to pay for servers yeah right and getting as a founder 10 percent or whatever you wound up with certainly yeah. less than 20 percent when you yeah. started yeah it's just fine exactly exactly there, big but there's, pie there's many different ways to do it, right? And there's there's no right answer. And I think that people are looking for the algorithm. You know, there's no algorithm. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, self-awareness. I thought you were going to say the, when I asked people that question, what's important in startups, I didn't know you were going to go to self-awareness. I thought that was a possibility. My other guess was you were going to say just building a product that really helps people. Oh, but, well, that, I thought I was taking that for given, for granted. But that's kind of, a, that's kind of table stakes today. It yeah, is interesting. If, like, if you don't build a product that people actually use, then... Yes. That, what are we like, doing not, here? Yeah, exactly. Like you should get get a job somewhere. There's no. Yeah. How did you raise from? Like I have a list here of your investors. It's like ninety different investors. Did you just email everybody like a BCC? Like, hey, I'm starting a company. Here you go. Or did it's you like actually a, meet the with the world's all biggest of them? Kickstarter? No, I, no. We met with all these investors. You know, we raised money from from uh, General Catalyst led the the Series A and then Andreessen in the Series B. But we also raised money from Sound Ventures, Y Combinator. Uh, SV Angel, Thrive, Founders Fund, Greylock, First Greylock, Round, yeah. Dreesen. Yeah, so I many, mean, many, many more. Bonkers. And our idea was that we wanted to build a community of investors who would support us. And also, you know, we felt like, um, you know, we wanted to market to their portfolios. And uh, you know. that makes total sense. So if you build a better mousetrap and their investors, they might refer yeah, you. Exactly. That's smart. Uh, all right, man. Listen, this has been great. We could talk for hours, and we did. <laughs> this uh, is amazing. One of my favorite founders and uh, considered individuals here in the Valley, living the dream, working living, hard. Living you still riding on that motorcycle? You know, I haven't ridden in uh, at least a year. Okay. I've been riding those jump bikes around and-, and uh, All right, jump bikes, okay. Jump bikes and birds when, they, they, when they're in the city. And then- I was going to talk to you about this, because you, you're married now. Yes. Kids? No kids. But that's on the roadmap. Maybe. Uh, yeah, one day, one day. One day, okay. Well, how old are you now? 35. Oh, 36. I, oh, no, sorry. Oh, it's 35, and I'll turn 36 this year because it's the year of the boar. Got it. Chinese New Year's. Chinese New Year, today. yeah. I just got back from Hong Kong. I had Peking duck, three out of four meals, and then nice. I had roast pig, the fourth. Yes. It was amazing. Yes. 
Uh, no, it's a good time to have kids, actually. It's when you're set up and you're in, that's when I had my first daughter when I was in my late 30s. How, and, how old are your kids? So I have a nine-year-old daughter and then I have twins who are going to be three years old in March. Wow, congrats. So yeah. it's the perfect time because you have the resources yeah. and you're mature, but you don't want to wait too much longer Yeah. because then you start to get tired. Yes. And I'm 48 now and like I have to work out to rebuild my energy so that I can pick up twins. And also, <laughs> if you have twins, it, it doubles the weight. So instead but, of yes. having like a 30 pound daughter, you have a 60, 60, pound. yeah. 60 pounds, one on each arm. It's good for working out, but it's actually you a perfect- practice those hammer curls. Yeah, exactly. No, it's a perfect <laughs> time for you to, yeah. to do it. It's, uh, but I was gonna tell you about that bike. Yeah. People are bad drivers here and they, they are, are on their phones. Oh my God, I saw a Waymo car last night. And this is going to sound biased because, you know, family is... Whatever, cruised. they all crash at some point. But yeah. it just cut off this guy. I don't know if it was the human driver or whatever. No. I was like, whoa, that's like definitely... Not, not cool. Not cool, yeah. Yeah. And just people are distracted. Like, stay off that. I loved motorcycles. I When I was in Brooklyn, I when I was 18, 19 years yeah. old, I would ride motorcycles. Yeah. And every time I'd leave, my mom would be on the porch of the brownstone. Yeah. When I'd leave, I'd come back four hours later. You know where she'd be? On the porch. On the porch waiting for me to get home because she was a nurse. Yeah. And all she did, she ran the emergency room. And oh all she God. did was, you know, help. Motorcycle trauma. Motorcycle trauma. Yeah. Elon almost died on one when Not he was a kid. Like, no. it's just, it's too dangerous. I haven't, actually haven't ridden it in a year. Yeah. yeah. No, it's like my two things I tell, I have a lot of friends who either want to become pilots, which yeah. is it, alluring yeah. to founders, yeah, or ride motorcycles, which yeah. is super alluring to the same type of people who want to be founders. Yep. Like they're independent, yeah. you know, technical. Yeah, you get your own space. You get to yeah. on your own venture. Yeah, it's like adventurous, and yeah. it's just those two things. Motorcycles, maybe if you're in a place where you're like riding in the hills where there's no cars, like yeah. totally get it. Like yep. if you drove down the PCH or something. Yep. But man, in this city, watching people drive with their phones out, like. Oh yeah, it's gotten way worse. People are like on their phone fa on Facebook or Instagram or something while they're driving down the road. It's bonkers. People are gonna die. Stay yeah. off that motorcycle. And if you wanna do pilot, for those friends of mine, if you wanna be a pilot, just get a co-pilot. If you can afford to have a plane yeah. and do this, you can afford a co-pilot yep. who does it for a living in I, case you make a mistake. See, that's what I want, except I don't wanna be the pilot at all. I wanna just be flown somewhere. Yeah, it's called a private chat. Yeah. Yes. You want a private... What you're talking about is Atrium being sold for $5 billion, yeah. and then you get your... Finally get your jet. It's the only thing left is a jet If I finally get and that a sports jet, team. If, if I get that jet, I'll finally, finally, I'll be happy. I know <laughs> that my that's happiness... That's a joke. ...is not the jet. Yeah. It's owning the Knicks. There we and go. And so I just tweeted the other day that I'm decided I'm going to work for the next 10 years and invest in 100 companies a year just for the explicit purpose of like building a model that results in me owning the Knicks. Yes. At 60, 12 years from now, I'll be 60 years old. I'll buy the Knicks and then have 20 years of life left, hopefully. Yes. To win a championship for New York. And then you'll I'll be finally happy. be happy. If the ch if I'm on, if I hold that trophy yeah. in the Canyon of Heroes in New York and bring a championship to the Knickerbockers, my team, which hasn't won since 73, I will finally be happy <laughs> it's only going to take another 32 <laughs> years and seven billion dollars yes. which is the yeah. current value of the knickerbockers oh and the garden in new york all right uh thank you emmy award-winning producer jackie it's episode 900 and uh 99 unicorn founders and investors to go jackie you have your marching orders the last the next 100 episodes all unicorn founders and the next episode is going to be the founder of um SendGrid, wow. also a unicorn. Unicorns, unicorns, unicorns on unicorns on unicorns on unicorns. Unicorns on unicorns on unicorns on unicorns. Okay, uh, great job, Justin, and we'll see you all next Thank time on Sweet Cyrus. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.